one of the first things that we have to teach children to do is to use a mat. When we work in Montessori, we are either using a floor mat or a table mat, depending on the material that we're using. So you've got to have floor, a floor mat and a table mat in your homes for the children to have access to, depending on how you're set up, okay? Why do we use a mat? It shows me that this is my space. I must stay within it, okay? I must keep my material organized within that space, okay? What's your name? Yeah, dear. I want to teach you how to use unro uh, unroll and roll a mat. This is the material. This is how we carry it. Can you bring it for me to the table? Okay, sit here. Thank you. Yardian, today I'm going to teach you how to unroll and roll this mat. Watch me, then I'll give you a turn to try. Would you like to try? Guardian, today you have learned how to unroll and roll a mat. Anytime you want to do any work, you need to take a mat first, okay? Would you like to return it to the shelf? Are we okay? Um, yep, sure. Can you present it? Do you have to be quiet and show that? Or sometimes with a kid, you usually like... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> keep saying stuff, okay. right? So we Is definitely... Do yeah. Roll it and stuff? definitely have to keep quiet because then you're splitting the senses the children can do one thing at a time either they can listen to you or they can watch you <coughs> so we're going to let them watch us that's more effective than them listening to what we're saying mm -hmm. so then they're confused so you'll see most of our presentations are done in silence so that the child can watch what we are doing and learn from that and for young children it's not easy for them to grasp it one time. Yeah. So do you keep repeating that each time they want to work? Or? So um, once I've done this, okay, I wouldn't do this for an 18 month old. Mm -hmm. I would only do this two years and above. 18 months, I would help them, let's get a mat, let's roll it out and stuff like that. But I wouldn't do that kind of a presentation, you know. Um, but from two years, yes. Uh, then I've watched her, I told her, would you like to try? And I see how she does it. She's never going to do it as perfectly as that. But I will watch her and see what is the effort she's applying. Is she doing it to the best of her ability? It may not be completely straight, but I can see how earnest she is, and that's fine. She doesn't have to do it perfectly. If she is the type that just do whatever, then how, how do you... Would you like to try again? Should I show you again? Would no. you like to see it one more time? Can I show you again or would you like to try and do it? Let's try and make it so that it's a bit neater. Can you roll it so that it's a bit neater? Oh, it's a bit loose. It's a bit messy. Can we make it a bit neater? Can we make the roll tighter? Are we okay? Any questions? So again, this presentation really depends on the kind of mat you have in your house. What you choose to buy and you'll do it that way. All good? Okay. Yeah. I was wondering, what is the aim of 
enrolling and enrolling the mat? What is the aim of enrolling? To use the mat, for the use of the mat. Okay. So they're learning how to use the mat. To get them become order or? Definitely for a sense of order. Oh. Okay. The first impression for them, yeah. I mean, uh, you don't want them to roll it out like this and just mm -hmm. throw it open, right? You want to do things in an orderly and a neat way mm -hmm. and an organized way. So that's the main aim? The main aim is, the main aim is to unroll and roll a mat. Okay. That's what it is. That's why I'm teaching her. But while doing it, she will build a sense of order. She develops independence. She develops eye-hand coordination. Yeah. All okay? Any questions? Okay, before we can get children to carry these kind of trays, we want to teach them how to carry an empty tray first. Because when children carry trays, they don't carry it like this, they carry it like that and everything goes. In a, a children's, like a children below the age of three, we would have these kind of trays. Okay, um, yeah, if you're, when you're going downstairs, you'll see all the trays are like this. Because children don't carry straight, they carry a little bit like this in the beginning. And then if it's an open tray, then everything will fall and crash. So these are suitable for younger children. Now when you start, before you encourage them, you, before you give them a lesson on carrying a tray full of objects, you want to give them an empty tray first. And so you'll tell them, come on, uh, you know, Mary, I want to teach you how to carry a tray. Watch me, then I'll give you a turn to try. And so you'll carry the empty tray and just walk in the classroom. We walk around the circle. I don't have space here, but you can walk, okay? And then put it back and then ask her, would you like to try? The important part is telling them, would you like to try? It's not just about watching me do something. They have to also try themselves, okay? So would you like to try? After she's done an empty tray, the next day maybe you can put a bean bag inside it and have a, you know, tell her, can you walk on this line? Can you take this tray to the end of the room? Can you take this bean bag to the kitchen? Anything simple. After she's done that, give her something heavier, a plastic cup, an empty plastic cup, an empty plastic bowl. Different things to get her used to it. It helps to develop poise, it helps to develop balance, it helps to develop gross motor skills. Okay? So, once she's getting better with that, then you will start introducing trays that have objects in them. Are we okay? The other activities that you can do, opening and closing doors. Children don't know how to do that, right? They're banging doors and opening. So everything becomes done in that way. Mary, today I want to teach you how to open and close the door. Every time we're going in and out, it's nice when it's quiet. Sometimes people knock at the door and I would like you to open. So let me show you how do we open and close the door. Watch me, then I'll give you a turn to try. In the beginning, of course, they're going to think she's crazy. Why is she talking to me like this? Watch me and I'll give you a turn to try. Trust me, they get used to it in no time. Okay? And then you show them. Depending on the door you have on your, in your house, you will do the presentation. Open the door and then close it. When we close doors, sorry, Siska. We close doors like this, okay? With our hand here and then close it. If you're closing it like that, it's not very easy to bang it, okay? Because we can't bang like that, yeah? Like this, we can bang it shut. So we put our hand here and we shut the door. Would you like to try? And then the child would try. Are we okay? But again, like I said, it depends on the door in your house. Does your door open outward? Does, is it a, a revolving kind of a handle or whatever? Yeah? Are we okay? <coughs> so even if you're doing something in your homes like, today I want to teach you how to get your own water from the jug or from the aqua machine or whatever it is. Watch me, then I'll give you a turn to try and have cups available there. Every step, take the cup, put it there, press the water down, pull it out. Would you like to try? Okay? Do your steps that way. Yep. Uh, do you talk like that? Not anymore, but I did. Not anymore. 
So, everything so you know, I'm in a classroom right now and I'm teaching you. So it sounds very stern, but it's not that way. Hey, do you guys want to get some water? Can I show you how to do it? Just watch me and then you can try as well. Do you, do you get me? It's not that watch me and you'll have a turn. That's just so formal, right? So no, I didn't talk exactly like that with my children. Um, you go with the flow, you know, of the mood when you're talking. But in a classroom, it doesn't suit to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when your kid is interested in using the uh, aqua yeah. thing, mm -hmm. and then she can't stop, so the water is going everywhere. So they're going to make mistakes. So again, you have to um, uh, show them how to tidy it. So if she's made a mistake and she spilled. Then you're not going to reprimand her and say, oh no, what have you done and this and that. But OK, oops, I think the water fell out this time. Next time, can you try and just fill it so there's no spillage? But let's clean it up. Let me show you how to clean it up. And so you show her how to clean it up. Sometimes they purposely make mistakes because they like yeah. the thing yes. yeah so it'll happen all right and you keep encouraging you know it's where we're wasting water and it's uh, not nice whatever to waste water and this and that they will do it once they'll do it twice they'll do it three times and then they'll be over it okay but